software for video processing. So video processing software is used for the creation of video media, which incorporates the following features. So firstly, we'll look at some examples and that will be of Apple iMovie, which is common on most Apple devices, whether it be iMac or iPads or iPhones. And the beauty of iPads and iPhones is you can actually capture the actual data using those devices and then edit them with Apple iMovie. It's very easy and very user-friendly way of making movies. But I know a lot more video processing enthusiasts love Sony Vegas, okay, which is a high-end, high powered video processing software which has all the features we're about to talk about today but takes them into a lot of depth and gives a lot of customization freedom to those users when publishing their videos. So let's start talking about some of the features. And the first one is we've got to be able to import data, whether it be in digital or analog format when we get it. Okay, an analog source would be if it's recorded on a, a traditional type of video camera onto tape on film, so on magnetic tape, and that we need to sequentially then bring across onto the, our actual computer and digitize that data. But these days, a lot of our data, our video data is in digital form. When we do use our devices such as our phones or tablets or modern digital cameras to capture that video data, it's already in digital form. So essentially, we capture the actual video data from the real world using these devices, and then we plug them into our system or we take out the SD card from the actual device and insert it into our system. And then that data is then imported into our video processing software, our Apple iMovie or our Sony Vegas. Next, we can also add other media to these actual applications or these videos that we are making. Okay, so we can integrate and manipulate audio tracks during the production of video. We can add animations for transitions and add text overlays, okay, as well as static images for actually giving more description to our video, whether that be for opening or closing credits, okay, or to say who someone is on screen or set the tone for our video. All the other actual media types can be incorporated into the actual video data that we are making hence making it a multimedia package even though that we are video processing. We do all this using a timeline or a storyboard, which are two different views that allow us to structure our video. So when we import video data into it, our actual uh, video while it's being edited, okay, we can do things such as splice the video and split the actual video data into multiple sections. We can then delete sections out of the actual video that we don't like or that might have been mistakes. When I do my videos, I've got quite a few in there, okay, and, but then we can insert new things in, okay, we can insert new edits or as said, the other types of media, we can insert a still image in there or some credits in there, okay, between different parts of our video using the timeline. Essentially, the timeline allows us to put our video in a sequential order, an order that we want our published video to appear as once we finalize it. When editing the video, we have a variety of different options. Okay, so we can add in things such as transitions, effects, titles, and static images. A lot of those we've already mentioned with the incorporation of text. Okay, but how one scene changes to another, that's what a transition is. Okay, we can really glam it up by adding in an animation that makes it more interesting when one video clip ends and then we change to another video clip, essentially when a scene changes. Okay, but as I said, we can put it in still images and usually video editing software has a lot of specialized way of adding exciting text or an exciting transition or effect into our video so that we can really enhance it or make the picture quality even better okay, once it's being viewed in our published format. Distribution now has changed kind of recently in recent years. Traditionally, we distribute video data on a CD or DVD or now obsolete tape, okay? And that's how we actually send it to someone or give it to someone and they'd watch it off that medium. But these days, video data, as I'm doing right now, is distributed through streaming services. So you'd be watching this on some sort of streaming service right now, okay? And based basically me uploading my video to a server and then you are accessing that server and watching my video through that server. And that's how things such as Netflix and Hulu and um, Disney Plus, that's how they all function, okay? You're actually watching streamed video data, okay? It's stored on a hard drive on a server and that is the best way and the way a lot of us are viewing now. We don't need the discs anymore or the tapes anymore, okay? Although it is nice to have that box, okay, they take up space in our home or they're hard to find. Whereas now everything's at the click of a button. So video editing software has these actual um, formats so that video data can be uploaded after it has been published to be streamed, okay? Which is now more common than ever. In conjunction with that, 
we can save and play videos in a variety of different formats and codecs. Now, this can be for the aforementioned reason of distribution, but the other side of it is for compression, okay? And all these formats we can save in have a different form of compression applied to them. The most common compression used this day is MP4 because it's highly compatible and has a great amount of reduction with a very minimal to almost no noticeable loss of quality to data. We can have an MP4 format that is still in 4K quality and it looks fantastic on screen. But other formats we might save in too are AVI and MOV. AVI for Microsoft Systems, okay, and MOV, which are my videos usually save as because I'm creating them in QuickTime on an Apple computer. Okay, so sometimes in conjunction with what actual uh, hardware system we're using and what software is on that system. But then if we are going to publish for mainstream uh, use, okay, usually the best format is MP4 for its general acceptance and great quality and high compression. And then finally, we can really get technical with a video. We can re-encode a video, which means the video might have been already been published once, but we can then re-encode it by changing certain things about it, such as the size of the frame. So what size is the actual video, widescreen or traditional um, size? Okay, we can change the bit rate. Okay, so how many uh, colors there are happening. So the actual um, bits that are being used, how much data is assigned to all those bits in every image of my video the aspect ratio and resolution, okay, the amount of pixels on screen, and then the actual frame rate itself, how many frames are appearing per second, okay, now video has always been pretty standard at 24 frames per second, okay, but there have been movies that have come out in recent years that are 48 frames per second, okay, and for some reason, although that they're higher frame rate and they should be uh, smoother, it does take a bit of adjusting to get used to, for some reason it doesn't seem normal, it's not like gaming where the higher frame rate is always better, 24 Frame, uh, frames per second does seem to work pretty fine still in this day and age, okay? Higher frame rates aren't always better, but it is being experimented with and may in future turn out to be a higher frame rate is better, especially with like, I think, 3D movies and stuff like that as well. Look, I hope this video has given you a good introduction to video processing software and essentially the features of video processing software, essentially how they allow us to import data, how we can edit that data and in include things such as other media types and effects such as transitions and... Um, uh, text and credits, okay, using things such as a uh, timeline, okay, and that we can now create it so that it can be distributed, whether it be on disk or through a streaming service, okay, so that users can access and watch our movie.